So, what's up guys, I am 63Z, and I'm here on the 14th of the 6th, 2016 uh, E3 conference. Finished like four hours or so ago, uh, wait, actually five hours ago now. I had time between the final of that to go to re to watch the Ubisoft one because I wasn't awake when the Ubisoft one was on because it was just too early in the morning for me to be up. So I got up in time for the Sony one and then watched the Bethesda one. I've already been to the shops and gotten a whole fuck ton of pre-orders on uh, of another of another four games as well as add some more into two games that I've already got on. So I've just put on another hundred fifty bucks or some shit like that to add on to my list of shit. And this is going to be my E3 video. This is hopefully going to come out tomorrow on Wednesday. So I'm going to try and edit this all tonight to release it for tomorrow. <coughs> I'm going to try and edit this all tonight and release it for tomorrow so it's not relatively out of date. Um, I've downloaded four of the five conferences. I'm waiting for the Ubisoft one to finish downloading because this one's. I've tried to do it three times already and each time it's failed at about three quarters in and it's just stopped. <sighs> We're going to start off with the EA conference, which was the first. The order of it was EA, Bethesda, Microsoft, Ubisoft, and then Sony. My favorites, my, my order of like top, the very first one to the very last one, like favorite first and then last, probably be Ubisoft. Well, no, it's either, no, I'll probably go Microsoft, Bethesda, Ubisoft, Sony, and then EA. EA only because I really only like one thing. In there, I'm not a real big FIFA, Madden kind of person, that kind of stuff, so that's all really down to just the one game that I liked in there, next to Battlefield 1, because Battlefield 1 was in there as well, but the Battlefield 1 was in two conferences, Microsoft's and EA, so I'll probably cover that from the Microsoft's one. We're going to start off with the EA conference, so um, this is literally my opinion of the best games I've read the whole thing. I'm going to go through all five conferences and my favourite games out of them all. There's not going to be much from Sony from the Sony conference because all that is basically PlayStation 4 exclusives but then again there are some games that I really liked in there that I'll still cover but even though I'm not going to be able to play it personally. Um, actually no we'll start off with Sony because those are ones that I actually can't play. So Sony conference uh, I'm going to have a little like thing up here of the video part that I'm talking about like of any kind of trailer or something like that so I can talk about it here and have it here. So probably the first one that I just wasn't expecting at all. Like, I had heard nothing about this whatsoever. I was not expecting any kind of God of War thing. Like, that was a really cool idea to me. I've never played God of War, but I've always been down to, like, hear about the, like, the story behind it kind of thing. Like, with Halo, you could hear about all the, the, the timelines and everything that's happened in it. I like hearing about the God of War timeline. I don't know, I don't really know that much. I don't really pay too much attention to it, but I really like the game as it's set, as on its own. And what they released this year was actually really, really cool. It was, a, it was a live gameplay demo. Sony definitely killed their conference. It was just literally bang, 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 bang. There was nothing extended for like 20, 30 minutes, something shit like that. Um, the God of War video was probably the longest next to the very last one, which I'll talk about in a second. But even then, they waited to the very end for that. And they already covered it once at the very start to give some kind of information towards it. But God of War, it was a live gameplay demo. You see him talking to what you would assume is his son and which I believe is and I think he says it at one point in it that it's his son but you know knowing a video game there could very well be a plot twist and it's not actually his son. The God of War looked really really cool it's something that I would want to play but I don't have the ability to play because I don't have a PlayStation 4. I would play it on PlayStation 4 because there's a lot of good exclusives that have came out for it. Days Gone I think it is Days Gone is basically another kind of zombie apocalypse mutated people kind of thing. The the thing, the people in it, like the, the mutated people, they die really easy, basically like one or two bullets and they're just down. You see at the very end, I'll show a little clip of it here, he's just mowing through everyone like and they're all just dying like straight away, there's no like fight up against it, he's not shooting in the head to kill him on here or anything like that, it's just literally all body shots, down and fucked. But the very end it was really cool, the graphics on all these videos that they had shared was really, really intensely amazing. Um, so. You see in the video, you're playing as one of two brothers, and the, I think the brother that you're after, I think you're after the other brother, or you're after a guy who's hurt the other brother, I'm not sure, they didn't give him much context into who the guy was chasing after, but he chased a guy, they said his name, but I can't remember his name, he found him, and he left, left him for dead, uh, all the people tried to eat him, and then as he was running away, he bolted up, and he eventually made his way up the barn house, 
a crossing away over into some silo and then it would to black and that was the end of the conference. It was a really cool looking game. If I was to have a PlayStation 4, that and God of War would be two games I would definitely consider getting. Horizon, Horizon Zero, something like, so I think that's the name. Uh, that's another game that I would get. It's a bit, it's a bit out of my kind of liking for a video game. It's really cool concepts and really great graphics and it's got a, like a strong female protagonist and shit like that, but it's just something that I wouldn't put my money on to buy. I wouldn't like go out of my way to buy it. If someone bought it to me, bought it for me as a present, I would play it, no doubt. But it's not something I'd go out of my way to buy. Um, it's about robots have taken over the, the world. Some are corrupt, which is why they attack other people. Others are just normal calm ones that you can walk around kind of thing. They showed a live gameplay demo and over the past couple of months there's been one or two trailers that have been going around on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, a lot of social medias. I found it on Facebook, believe it or not, about a month and a half ago, something like that, about a couple weeks after it was actually released, like the trailer. And they showed a live gameplay demo of the chick running out of what would be what you would assume is a village to go find a certain thing. I don't remember what that certain thing was. Um, because I've just been, oh, I've been crazy, I'm running off nearly no sleep here. She's gone for some scavenging, she attacks some of these little, more calmer creatures that are towards her initial village, then she tries to run off after she's scavenged off them a bit, runs into a guy, uh, his village has been attacked, so she's gone straight to that village, told the guy to fuck off to her village, and she's gone over there, she's taken like a, what, I think it was called a rough head or something like that, and, which is basically a bull and she's like tamed it using some sort of kind of elect electronics thing like they're so far into the future that they're in apocalypse but they don't have any kind of better weapons considering but anyway then it goes to the attacking of the big machine there's like some nice big fight scene you get some really cool things a lot of different kind of weapons and such shit like that i did like this one mainly because it's very um fucky fucky kind of thing not like but like fucky fucky like mind fucky fucky uh, it was, I think it was called Connor, or that was the protagonist in it, but the game, if you watch the Sony conference, you know the one I'm talking about, it's about an android negotiator that's trying to negotiate with this other guy that's got a girl on, air, on a ledge and shit like that. It kind of made me think about what the game is really about, and I don't know, if I, if I, if I was a cheaper game, I would definitely buy it. I don't even know how much it is. If I had PlayStation 4, that would be something I would buy, I'd be interested in, and definitely would make a video or two on, but if I was to tr want to play it on my own in my meantime, just as myself, Probably not. Now, that's all I believe that I really liked from Sony because the new COD I'm not interested in at all except for the remastered of COD 4 but even then I'm probably not going to pre-order it just yet because um, I'm still kind of making up my mind on it. I kind of like Battlefield 1 more at the moment but still. On to the net. Now we're into the EA conference. EA only because I only like one other game in there besides Battlefield 1 but Battlefield 1 was also from Microsoft so I'm going to consider that the Microsoft one to talk about because I don't I'm not really into Madden I'm not really into FIFA all that kind of stuff I play Star Wars Battlefront a bit but it's not really something that I go out of my way to play a lot of the time well I did play it the other night and I was doing really fucking well so Titanfall 2 we knew Titanfall 2 was coming and it's it, I was a bit salty at first the fact that they're saying that it's not only going to be an Xbox One thing or an Xbox thing anymore that now it's also gone to PC and PlayStation as well but considering the fact that Titanfall 2 is going to be a part of the play everywhere kind of, play anytime anywhere kind of thing they're going. Um, it will definitely obviously be on PC anyway as long as you have Windows 10, which is something else I'll go through in the Microsoft part of this little talk. Titanfall 2 is now going to be on all, all systems, all everything and shit like that. I liked it and I've already put 40 bucks on pre-order for it because I just really, really want it. I don't, I'm not getting any of the special editions with the fucking replicas and all that kind of crap because that's really, really extensive. The gameplay looked really cool as you'll be able to see up here. The, they've got an uh, actual single player campaign in it this time compared to last time it was just all online you had to play the campaign fuck me dead <coughs> Titanfall actually has a single player campaign now in comparison to the t original Titanfall it was all online the, even their campaign for it was just online matches played on certain maps I don't even I didn't even play it through it all because it was just like what's the point in doing this not many people are playing it I'm not getting many games and even then you have to win the match for it to count as moving on to the next part of the story and a lot of the time when I played no one was doing anything and they were all just fucking around and I just wanted to actually play the campaign but this time they have a single player campaign and it actually looks somewhat interesting and intriguing 
It's something I'll definitely play for on the channel straight away, straight a fucking way. With all these games coming out, I'm hoping to have a consistent set of games to play as well. Oh, I still want to say it, but oh, I'll say it in the Microsoft part. Anyway, back on the time. The first Titanfall didn't actually have a normal campaign. This one does. It looks fairly intriguing. It's something I'll definitely be playing straight away for you guys. And then the multiplayer, they've got six new Titans. They haven't released the names of the other four. There are two others. There are two of them that they've released the names for and their abilities for it. If I can be bothered while I'm editing this, I'll leave them right here and right here. Side by side. Um, it says their names, what they are, and then their abilities slash weapons kind of thing. So it's kind of cool. I think one's Eon and another one's something to do with fire. I think it's Blaster or something like that. I'm not sure. Didn't take too long to look at it. They're doing a beta for that some point before the release of it and I want to do that as well. As well as a beta for Halo Wars 2 as well as a beta for, for Honor and all that kind of crap but we'll get into them soon. So that's that, that's the EA, EA part of it for me. Titanfall 2 is definitely the number one game in there for me, not including Battlefield 1, in there for me to look out for. I, this is all just off of information that they've given you from the actual conference itself. I haven't gone out of my way to find out anything else except for the two things about the Titans because when I found out about Titanfall 2 I just wanted to look it up. But that's probably the only thing that's going to be external sources outside of the conference. This is a basic review roundup of the, my opinion of the best games in all, out of all five conferences. Now on to the next conference. Although Bethesda did not have much in it, it was one of my absolute favourites. So that's going to, not going to be this one. It's going to be the Ubisoft one, the one that's still trying to download now and we'll see if it's finished. We did it! Fuck yes! I've been trying to download it all day. Anyway, so Ubisoft. Fuck, I need to rejog my memory. Fuck. Hold on. Oh, fucking. Okay. So. Okay, so. I had to relook over it because the one I downloaded didn't actually work. It stopped at about three quarters once again. So as a part of the Ubisoft conference, there was a few things that I actually quite liked in there. There was one I, I was kind of okay with, like Grow Home. It was the next one of Grow Home, which I think was Grow Up. Um, so first I'm going to start off with something that I was keen for and then until I saw the conference, which I still think is a good game. It's just not something that I'm interested in actually playing. I'll watch people play it, but I'm not going to be interested in playing it myself. And that is Ghost Recon Wildlands. I had a $50 pre-order on it since last E3, because um, they said it was coming out the very start of this year, or around start of this year, middle of this year, something like that. So I put down a $50 pre-order and kind of took it off um, once I saw the thing today, and I put that on something else. But Ghost Recon Wildlands, I had a huge um, gameplay demo of finding a, um, the stew the stew maker or something like that. Someone who gets rid of the bodies, and I think he does it with hydrochloric acid. Um, they infiltrated the base using helicopters, cars, drones, suppressed guns, and all that kind of shit. It was quite cool, it was quite a good looking game, graphics and details wise. But, again, it's not something I would want to play uh, as in my free time. It's a good game, don't get me wrong, but it's not something I would go for my free time. As you, as I'm talking, you'll see the kind of gameplay right here. No one copyright strike me, please. Either way, I'm not going to matter because something in here is probably going to get done for anyway. So, that there's the part of the video right there. So, in, enjoy what you're seeing right now, and now into the next part. Now, although this isn't really a game, uh, it's the Assassin's Creed movie. They decided to show more about it, show some in-depth stuff behind the scenes. If you haven't heard about it, it's the Assassin's Creed movie. They've been leaking little things here and there, and they revealed a trailer for it not too long ago. And they decided to um, give some more out to the public at the U U Ubisoft conference today. So, there's some of it right up here, but other than that, I can't really say too much about it. It's got the um, guy who plays Magneto in the first class X Men's, X Men Apocalypse, X Men uh, Days of Futures Past. He's got the same guy, I don't remember his name for the life of me, but. He's a really good actor, and I'm kind of really keen for that movie. Yeah, it should be coming out hell soon, too. The next one, it's not something that I was actually, like, about, but it was something that really had a cool concept. It could be done really well with, like, a VR experience, like a virtual reality. But even then, in saying that there's not much to the game whatsoever, except for just, you know, going for the ride of it, there's not much to do besides that, except for riding down everything. Um, which is a game called Steep. It's basically you ride down, like, a, a, a mountain on a snowboard, skis, uh, 
power up like a parachute kind of thing where it like just glides around and you have like a little seat in it or a wingsuit now it's a cool idea for a game there's not going to be much to it in general so far but what i saw it was really cool i didn't put any pre-orders down on it or anything like so i kind of want to know more about it but it was a really cool game to definitely keep it right Next is an uh, actual VR game that's based in purely VR experience and it's called Eagle Flight. And you play as a group of four people, or like 4v4, and you play as eagles going to get prey to bring it back to things. Basically like a capture the flag mode, that's at least what they showed, that's all they showed really, was like a capture the flag mode for it. It was a really cool idea for a game and in a VR experience it'd be really cool, it might make it very... Uh, motion sicknessy, but other than that, it was really, really good. Uh, I'd, I wouldn't buy it just yet if it was something that was like a small indie game, which obviously it is. But if it was something like five, ten bucks, and I could buy it just on my the, like the Xbox store or just buy it on Steam, hell quick, and I'd play it for video. Fuck yeah, I'd do it. If I had friends to play it with, I would do it. I, I, if if I didn't have either of those and it just wasn't an easy buy or it was a bit too much or I don't have any friends to play it with. I won't do it, but either way, it's still really cool, it's a really good idea. The only reason why this one isn't the favourite part of this conference is because the other one I've just been excited for ever since I've seen it because I just love that kind of era, but this is Watch Dogs 2. I loved Watch Dogs 1, I didn't finish Watch, Dog, Watch Dogs 1 because after a while, a whole bunch of other games came out and I kind of just played them and forgot about Watch Dogs and I haven't had the motivation to go back to it. Everyone doesn't like the main protagonist in the original Watch Dogs. I quite liked him. I liked his story. I liked his whole thing. I liked his attitude and just his persona. So, but obviously it's a new game, new open world. You'd want to have a new protagonist. And it's obviously, this one's in San Francisco. They showed a live gameplay demo of them infiltrating some kind of operation to, to like hack into the system. The guy, not the main protagonist, which I think his name is Michael. I think, it, no, Marcus, Marcus. The other guy in there, if you watch it, whose name was Wrench, I'm really tempted to go as him for this year to Avcon, but I don't have the ability to be able to get that much together. It's a lot of leather, it's a lot of studs, and it's just a lot of effort to do in about a month. I'm pro if, if I don't go as Corvo next year, I'll probably go as him next year to Avcon. Because I don't really do much cosplaying, but those two guys are fucking legends. Anyway. So they played through a live gameplay demo of it and it looked really cool. I don't see how much there's much difference towards a lot of the hacking because I haven't really got a chance to play it. They haven't showed too much of different ways to do it. Obviously, they've added in new ways where you can fucking send cars off into fucking burnouts and shit like that. But other than that, they haven't shown too much besides a trailer. And it's still... A I've got my hopes up for the game because it's a really cool game in general. I thought Watch Dogs was better than GTA and Saints Row and all that kind of thing. Saints Row was better than GTA for me. I only liked GTA Vice City, other than that I don't really like GTA whatsoever. Saints Row 2 and then Watch Dogs was really good as well. I don't know who I'd put first out of those three games, Vice City, Saints Row 2 and Watch Dogs, but Watch Dogs beats any other Grand Theft Auto for me, I don't like any of the other ones, especially like just in general. So Watch Dogs for me was really, really good. I quite liked it a lot, so I'm keen to see what they can do with the next one. Now up next is the biggest one of the Ubisoft conference, and I don't know why they ended the conference on Steep, but this was the second to last one they added in, and it was a huge thing. The whole conference was just filled up with like gameplay demos. It wasn't like trailer after trailer after trailer, like the Sony conference, which is just a lot of trailers, a couple live gameplay demos, which didn't extend for too long. That's what I, wait, I, wait, never mind, I went back and never mind. It was just gameplay demo, gameplay demo, gameplay demo. Gameplay demo, trailer, gameplay demo. The each each game each gameplay demo had a trailer, but it was like it was just consistently just smashing proof of games. Like trailers are great, which gives you ideas of what games are to come, what games are coming out, and just all this shit. But yes. Oh. I'm recording. Why'd you get me more? Why well, haven't you eaten the other ones? No, I did, but you know, why did you get me more? Because I like to do nice things. No, I'm not adding this in. You can go out of the room. You cut me 
deep shot. Leave it shut. I still got my jerky. This was just a huge gameplay demo as well as they had the um, initial cinematic for it which gave a lot of backstory into why not a lot of backstory, just some backstory into why this is all happening kind of thing. It was all of a sudden a huge earthquake came and it ruptured everything, sent everything into a backward spiral and now suddenly these three factions which are the Samurai, Vikings and the Knights are all just in the same place, same area. Then even then saying that it doesn't really make too much sense but we're looking for more information towards it. I'm definitely looking for more information towards it. They're going to have a alpha and a beta to come before they even release the game, and it comes out on Valentine's Day the next year. So that's going to be my present to myself. But in saying that, it did give the villain towards the whole story, which was a... I can't remember his name for the life of me, but it will say it right here. I'm going to have shit playing right here, remember? Um, he'll have... It, he basically wants the wants them to all to fight, and in the gameplay trailer it showed a specific mission from the campaign because they've got a really cool looking campaign as well as what they showed last year for the multiplayer which was just nights on nights but a sign of peace. I will show them. I am Apollyon. Then they'll eventually be more integrated with all three factions. But then they showed a uh, part of the campaign, which was the Vikings have set a set a sail to land where the the Oni lives. So basically, the the chosen, or in other words, the samurai. They land on their shores, get a couple ships taken out, and like, fuck, fuck them up on the beach. They start to storm the place. There's this one main guy that you are, which is the raider. I follow the main guy, which is the raider, and he eventually makes his way up the wall. Everyone else didn't make up the wall, but he did. He fucks a fuck, fuck a ton of people up, and he lets to the rest of his band through through the gate, and eventually makes his way. To, eventually makes his way through to get to the main samurai, and it's a standoff between the big samurai guy and the big Viking guy. Their sword is fucking huge, and he is staunchy as hell. Both of them are staunchy as hell, but it's a big, nice final fight off. In the end, the Viking did win. That's the only people I'm probably going to play as, is the Vikings. Um, but the Viking won, and then it had the big ending standoff, just whack, smack bang his big battle axe in, on the floor in front of the big standing samurai statue. I was hoping he was going to try and like pull it down or some shit like that, but obviously it's a huge stone statue. He's not going to be able to do it on his own without any kind of help. The gameplay itself looked really, really cool, and the way you kind of try to block is a bit unpredictable with the way they'll attack, because you've got to have that really fast reaction time and shit like that, which is something that I'm really looking forward to doing, because it looks really fucking cool. Now, onto the next one, so we don't want to waste too much time on anything, is the Bethesda comp. Basically, I'm going to start off with the game, I didn't even know what happened, it was the very first game of the thing, which was called Quake. It was a very, it was a very fairly old game. It was apparently just a bit, like a couple years before my time, really. I've asked around a bit and... Yo. What the fuck was that? A tripod and a camcorder. Why? Recording a video. What video? On the E3 conferences. So you watched seven and a half, six, seven hours worth of video? Yeah. Have you gone to bed yet? Yeah. And now you're... Why? What's this? Did you see how they're remastering um, Crash Bandicoot? Yeah, for PlayStation only. No, they're gonna, they're considering doing it for Xbox. They're not gonna. I've read something saying that there's about 50-50 chance at the moment. Doubt it. Well, I don't. Pleb. Anyway, so it was a game called Quake. It was a couple of years before my time, really, but I asked around a bit, and it was a, like an arena game, and that's basically what they were saying this Quake will be now. It was, a, it was about a five-ish minute piece on what Quake is, plus the cinematic, tra not cinematic trailer, the, the trailer is itself. It showed a bit of gameplay, as well as a bit of a storyline to it. The next was something, it was kind of a cool idea of a concept. It was kind of like maybe Groundhog Day. It was called Prey. Again, I never really watched or played Prey before. It was something to do with you were being hunted in the first one, and then you were learning to hunt in the second one, and they thought it was a complete flop, so they decided to bring it back to just playing Prey, 
and you're being hunted again, not sure. You'll see in all the things up here that it gets a bit scary at one point and it goes into a bit of story of constant repeating of the days and shit like that. His eyes get a bit more red. I don't know too much of the story as not many other people do for this particular prey. We, all we can do is wait and see. The next part is literally a fuck ton of DLCs, add-ons and shit like that. I'm not a big Fallout or Doom fan or Elder Scrolls Online fan. But Fallout had a lot to do with another DLC coming out as well as Fallout Shelter as well as the the, the creative things that you can do on Fallout the uh, like the you can create the creator mode basically you can add conveyor belts and all this other sort of shit like that as well as a Dark Brotherhood um, DLC add-on thing for the Elder Scrolls Online Dark Brotherhood was one of the best things about Skyrim because uh, you were just literally a beast and it was probably one of the better storylines in the whole game next to the initial storyline because <clears throat> the uh, the, the people that were in White Run, the, the ones that make you a werewolf, um, it was a cool storyline, but it wasn't like a lot of detail. It's just like, okay, that's a storyline. Not real too much to it. There's not much depth. And then the, the the Thieves Guild, it was cool, but in saying that, it had a bit more depth to it. But even then, it wasn't a lot more. And then there was the the Dark Brotherhood, which was one of the probably one of the better ones because it really, really had a, a big storyline to it. In anyway, um, so then they're also adding, doing, oh fuck, they're doing uh, Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls stuff add on to the Dark Brotherhood thing, and then they release, they're going to be doing a, a Skyrim a card game, like Skyrim Legends. Uh, so, fuck me dead, I don't even really care about the card games, that's why I didn't add any others in, but I only added this in because, you know, it was Skyrim. Now they announced that they're going to do a remastered of Skyrim for next-gen consoles, as you'll see right here. The difference between the graphics is astounding. And that was one of the games I put on a pre-order. I didn't put in much on pre-order because they didn't actually announce the date that they would release the remaster. But I'm hoping it's sometime soon. So I just put some money down on it for the time being and then when it comes out, I'll probably pay the rest all up front. Um, the details between is just amazing. It's something that I really want, kind of want to play in here so that I can play whenever I want. And it's such a cool game because I lost so many hours to Skyrim. Like, so many. I could play for like eight, nine hours each day plus. And I wouldn't even realise it. Like, it was such a good game. Here's the main part of why I liked the Bethesda conference. This, they went, they dragged this part out for 25 minutes of their hour presentation. Their presentation went for an hour and this is 25 minutes of it. Good job. I fucking love the original of this game. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna play the shit out of this one too. Especially because you can do it two different ways. Now this is Dishonored 2. I've got the Game of the Year edition on Xbox 360 and PC. I bought the Definitive Edition on Xbox One like four months ago for Xbox One. So I've got the I've got all the DLC plus the original game on all like on a 360, Xbox One, and PC. I love this fucking game. I've completed all the, all of the campaigns on each single one and the DLCs, each single one. I fucking love this game. And they pulled this out for like a fucking 25 minute thing of um, some of the trailers, some more details, and then fucking gameplay trailers. I'll keep it playing here. So it starts off with finding out some new abilities such as like Far Reach, Mesmerize, Domino, um, fucking... Far Reach, Mesmerize, Domino, and Nightcrawler. So Far Reach is basically what Corvo used to be able to like go to diff dis dis different distances, which is Blink. But this is pulling her, so it's not like she's here, disappears, appears here. This is she's here, shoots something out, and it pulls her that fast that it's almost unseeable to in front of your eyes. But you can also do that to pull people as well as pull equipment, such as like exploding barrels. Uh, mesmerize is an ability you just shoot in front of people and anyone around the initial area of the mesmerize or that comes into the initial area of the mesmerize are just completely basically unconscious but still conscious they won't remember you're there they won't see you whatsoever and nothing will be alarmed no one can see the actual mesmerize thing itself as you can see right here it's like literally a sentinel out of halo and it just basically mesmerizes them they don't know what the fuck's going on even it does it even does it to the dogs like that's how 
much of an overpowered thing this is. Then you've got um, Nightcrawler, which is something that you saw in the initial uh, um, the trailer that they released, which was at the very, very end where she's trying to get out of the way. It's literally like a fucking ghoul shadow monster thing. It's so cool. And as you can see right here, this is basically what happened. And then... And then they have the, the thing from the initial trailer, which was this, which is basically showing how she got out of the tunnel area and you just see it and then you're making her way, making her way down. She's making her way to the guy, essentially to kill him. So then, went on to talking about their, their new engine that they made specifically for Dishonored 2 to give it better lighting, better, like, latency and better, like, speed and just consistency with the way it works, which they, which they called the Void Engine. It makes kind of sense of the fact that, you know, the Outsider is a part of the Void, which is the main, uh, the, the supernatural element to the very first game. And then it also mentions, I, I didn't even know this was a thing, it, although it does make sense, but it wasn't actually confirmed from the first one, that Corvo Atano is yeah, actually Emily Coldwin. That means him and the Empress got it on. And then, you know, obviously, Thorda was made. Emily. So, then it goes to the fact that this one is based in Kanaka. So the start of it starts off in Dunwall, where you uh, were in the first game. Then you're going to make your escape over to Kanaka, which is more of a tropical island feel, as well as other little things that they don't really want to tell us all about. And some things that they kind of put in on the trailers. Some little flying bugs, some fucking disgusting looking things. As well as some new pistols, as well as some new like weapons and crap like that. Now, it does have a release date, which is the 11th of the 11th, 16, which means it was the 11th of November this year, so it's really fucking close, and they've got two different types of extended pre-order. So there's the initial pre-order, which is just the game, then there's the deluxe edition, I think it is, I'm not sure. Um, don't quote me on the names though, by the way. It's like a deluxe edition where it's just game plus the definitive edition, which is something I already have in the Xbox One maps, propaganda, all that kind of little little collector's item stuff. And then there's the big one, which is $189 where I live. So, that has the Corvo Atano mask. I'm not sure if that's a mask that you can actually wear. I really fucking hope it is. Um, if it's not, if I find out it's something that you can't wear, closer to the date, I'll probably change my pre-order and then put the leftover money onto other games. Because I'm getting that only for the fucking mask. Only for the mask. I know I could buy that mask online somewhere, but this is made by the people who made the game, so it's a trustworthy thing. So, <clears throat> pre-ordering that one is what I'll be doing, which is getting the mark, the replica mask, as well as the definitive edition, Emily's ring, some other things and stuff like that. So I have, I'll have a spare definitive edition, which I will probably just end up selling, or you know something like that. Because it would be brand new game, fucking sealed and everything like that. Get some more money for myself. Anyway, uh, which is basically all I have to say on that. And we're back. Okay, so I had to re-go through the Microsoft one as well and see what was in that one too. But now I've gone through it all and there's a lot of games that I quite like the look of. Some that I'm just going to brush right over and then other information that I actually want to go into detail. The reason why I left Microsoft to last is there's just so much in there, otherwise the Bethesda one would have been first, purely for the design. We'll go to the small ones first and then we'll go into the bigger ones. So, first stuff I'm going to brush over is the new online feature, stuff like that, so the Play Anywhere. So, any, so Play Anywhere is a new thing that they're adding in with all new, newly made games from E3 onwards. So, it means you can play any game on your Xbox One. And then also play that on your Windows 10 PC, which so you can't. It it's only works for Windows 10. Anything before that does not. But it's basically if you have it on Windows 10 PC, you can play it on your Xbox One. If you have it on your Xbox One, you can play it on your Windows 10. It's as simple as that. It goes both ways, and it can save on both. You save it on your Xbox One, you have that exact same save progression on your Windows 10. It basically makes it easier to play when you aren't always at your Xbox or if you aren't always at your PC. <coughs> then there's um, adding background music to be able to um, to your thing now. So when you're playing, you can also have your own music in. It's not all this isn't just yet. It's something to come very very soon because they're still fiddling out the features. But these are stuff that is actually coming. Then there is uh, language 
like language lock so a lot of the time it's set to English or just a standard language it's a bit more diverse with the amount of languages as well as it will stick to that language so you don't have to constantly keep going back to it. Uh, they're bringing Cortana to Xbox One now so it's like the, vert, uh, the the artificial intelligence from Halo that you have with your Windows 10 PC so it's like a voice recognition kind of thing. There is now also clubs which means like if I wanted to be a part of a group of people that are all like-minded like me so say for example Rainbow Six there's a group of people who love Rainbow Six, uh, and if any one of them, I'm not necessarily friends with them, but they're in that group, I can hit them up and they can play with me if they want to play. It's just a matter of, it's a set of people that are like-minded like yourself. There's also looking for group, which is basically if I'm looking for some people to play online with me, but a more specific kind of thing, it's not just everyone's just in there, you know, if you feel like playing with people, you know, this is wanting people to do specific things kind of searching so I can look for people in particular or people can look for me in particular. There is also the arena mode, it's not coming till 2017 because they still need to get a lot of the details mixed up on it, or mixed up on it, worked out on it I mean, but it's basically going to be what um, the ESL is, the Electronic Sports League. So it's basically that but it's built into the Xbox system. So it's registering and playing games and being competitive in tournaments and all that kind of crap like that. So out of the way, those things will skip over some of the smaller games, as well as um, the fact that ID Xbox. ID Xbox is basically the more supporting independent developers, and a couple of those independent developing games are things like Insider, which are the people who made Limbo, and if you, uh, at the moment, Limbo is completely free for Xbox One users, so you can get that for free now. It's the people who made Limbo, and it's, pff, I don't even know what to think of Insider. It's kind of cool looking, but it's kind of trippy as well. There's another game after it which is really fucking creepy as fuck. It's called Joy. What, did I write anything oh, out? Yeah. Joy, it's up no. for preview, like game preview, so you can play it and trial it as of <laughs> July 26, 2016. So in the next month, about one month and 12 days away, we'll be able to actually play that game as a preview because it looks really cool, but it's at the same time really messed up, as you'll see right here. As if we've, I've just been talking, because I, I may not say right here, but it's been playing the whole time I've been talking about it. <coughs> so then there's other things like, I've never really gotten into the Final Fantasy series, and then there's Final Fantasy 15, as, well, there's not much to really say about that, because I never really got into it, I don't know much of the storyline, there's some gameplay about a big fight boss kind of thing right here going on right now, as I'm talking right now, right now, right as I'm talking, yeah, that's right, I'm still talking right now, I'm running out of breath, so I'm going to stop saying right now, because this is going to be the end of the video, and go to the next one right now. There's Recall, I found out a bit about that last year, but it was something that was just literally a 20, 30 second clip, and then it was done, all that had the name was Recall, and that was basically the end of it. Um, they gave us a bit more now, but still not much. All we're looking forward is some more information for what I'm not going to be getting it myself. I'll watch other people play it, but I'm not going to play it myself. Um, there is also, I forgot to leave this one out on before, but it's customizable controllers. Uh, as So it's like up to 8 million different types of customizations with colors, lengths, sticks, all that kind of crap. It's not an Xbox 360, it's not an Xbox Elite controller. It's fiddling around with colors, customizations, names all that kind of thing. It's just basically to make your controller look cool without getting the little skins on them like I have my little green grippy skin. Okay, so now we're going to go into a more of a bigger part of the actual Xbox console itself. So they've got a thing called Project Scorpio. I think Project Scorpio is what the Xbox One S is, but I'm not too sure. They haven't released any kind of VR thing for Xbox yet. There is the HoloLens, which I was really pissed off about that they did not have the HoloLens in there from last year. They have not upgraded anything on it and they have not put it into this year's conference. I wanted to see more. But they did a thing called Xbox One S and they also added a thing not long after it called Project Scorpio. I'm believing that's the same thing, but if it's not, I'll do some more research into it later on after I've done these videos and shit like that. So Project Scorpio, for the time being, is Xbox One S and people think the S stands for Slim or Scorpio. But it's four times smaller than the standard Xbox One, which... That big? Yeah, that big. So it's four times smaller than that. So it's going to be four times smaller than the Xbox One originally now. It, has, it will have an inbuilt two terabyte hard drive. The max they have at the moment is one terabyte built in, otherwise you have to get extended ones added in. I got an extra terabyte hard drive or two terabyte hard drive that I plugged in. It is... Um, we've got an inbuilt, inbuilt cooling system, uh, something like that. It, was, it makes it more compact and keeps it cooler. 
it is <clears throat> uh, 4K video viewing, not 4K gaming. It's meant to be seamless viewing because it is a <clears throat> it's a whole like home entertainment thing as a full thing. Like it's like Netflix, it's TV, it's games, Gamers it's apps, it's Foxtel, it's, it's everything. It connects console with console everything, including even your sound system. So it's a 4K. It allows up to 4K viewing now as well. So it can keep up with TVs that are up 4K viewing, obviously. Um, it has six teraflops or seven teraflops of like processing power, um, and its graphics card is a lot better. So it runs games smoother, faster, without laggy or jumpiness kind of thing. Although a lot of PCs have that now anyway, it's just a nice thing for a console to have it too. We'll go on to a couple more of the other ones. So I'm not a big fan of scale bound. Um, I was at first, but then after I saw the, the gameplay for it, I was kind of like, eh, not that cool. Uh, so I took off my pre-order for that, but it's still something that I would suggest other people would get. I'd watch other people play it, but I wouldn't play it myself. I thought it'd be a cool game to play, but after I saw it, I was like, uh, it's not kind of not really my style. It's probably just a waste of money um, for myself. Then there's Tekken 7, which I grew up on Tekken 2. Tekken 2, yeah. Tekken 2 or 3 are the ones I played a lot. Um, and they're bringing it back and it still is the guy with the fucking hair, which is weird as fuck, but Tekken 7's another one that's coming out as well as fucking, there's more Division DLC, which is underground shit and a whole bunch of crap like that. If you want to look that up in more detail, go right ahead. This is just basically going to do everything that's happening in the, in the um, conferences. Okay, so um, it goes to Forza Motorsport Horizon 3, which is the next Forza game out and it's going to be based in Australia. That's right, it's based on all of Australia's beautifulness and amazingness. It is, it looks really, really cool. It's still not something I'd buy myself. I love car games, but I've never been a big Forza person because I find Forza is really hard to handle for me. I like Need for Speed. <coughs> Karma. I like Need for Speed because for me it handles a bit better, but Forza is still a really, really good game. Um, and it comes out in September 20, uh, it comes out September 2016 on the 27th. So 10 days after my birthday, and then Gears of War 4 was shown straight up, straight out, and they've got a Gears of War Elite Controller customized thing with all this cool crap like that, and that's it showed a bit of the campaign going through and a bit of a storyline for it all. Random storms coming in, debris, explosions, gunfire, just everything. They were fighting the swarm as you would have seen on the beta. It's the same enemy in that it was different types of swarms. In the, in the beta, they had just big, staunchy fucking kill you swarms, and then this one they had like little mini guys, and then some bigger guys, and then some really bigger guys, and that's about it. And that comes out on October 11th. There is no more betas for that because that already happened. But it's not too far away, so don't get worried. So then there was another small trailer towards Dead Rising 4, and it was very Christmas themed. There wasn't much to it at all. It was literally makes like a minute, a minute and 20 long. It was just. I never played Dead Rising before, but it's, I was going to get Dead Rising 3, but by the time I got it, it was that late after the release came out, so I was like, oh, I'll wait for the next one to come around. I'm not going to buy this one straight away, but I'm still going to get it. But it looks kind of cool, but it had a Christmas theme towards the trailer, and that kind of put me off and putting any um, money down on it just yet. It still looks really cool, um, and you can definitely have a look through it yourself. And then it went on to State of Decay 2, uh, that's coming to Xbox One and Windows 10 exclusively, as well as the rest of everything that I'm saying on here has been exclusive to Xbox One and Windows 10, except for Battlefield 1, The Division, and maybe the indie games. Well, the world they sell themselves out like that. As well as Final Fantasy, that was that's not like exclusively Xbox either. Um, so there was State of Decay 2, it showed a bit towards that, some killing of zombies and shit like that. It was really cool. Something that I kind of want to get, because I've heard a lot of good things about the original State of Decay, but in, in essence of what it is, I'll still wait to hear more about it, a lot like the other games on there. I like a lot of the games, but I'm still waiting to hear more about it before I make up my mind. Now we're down to the last couple ones that are actually really big and something that I really, really, really enjoyed seeing. Um, so we got one on DOS. Two more to go. Probably the best one out of the Microsoft conference was easily 
not the one that I'm about to say right now, but the one after I'm about to say right now. The one that I'm about to say right now is the Battlefield 1 game. That's the one that's fucking staunched and destroyed the shit out of the COD that was announced and got, like, dislike bombed as one of the most disliked gaming videos on YouTube ever. Battlefield 1 looks really, really cool. It's gone back to World War 1. Everything I can say isn't anywhere near as much as what you'd be able to find by one Google search away from this. So if you want to find out more about it, go right ahead. I'll still leave a video up here talking about it and all that kind of crap, but there's going to be... It's going to be released on the 21st of... What is it? October? It's going to be released on the 21st of October this year. And for anyone who has EA Access, gets it eight days early. They get, they get it on the 13th, and then, then after that, they get it up until... They get it from 13th to the 21st, and then after the 21st, everyone has it. So it's basically an extra play before the actual play, like what, like what um, Rainbow Six had. They did um, an alpha, and then two betas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's an alpha and two betas, and then one of the betas led into the release of the full game. And what they're doing, it's not a beta necessarily, it's just early access. So people who have EA access, which is $80 a year, um, you can play games on, that's all on there for free whenever you want, and they're full games as well. It's fairly, it's fairly good for what it is, um, but it just adds more of a, a costly thing every now and then. So that means you get it an extra eight or seven days early. I'm not too sure because I'm really talking really fast, so I don't really want to do maths. And then the next game, which is the best one out of the whole Microsoft conference, was the very last one that they put into it, which was Halo Wars 2. Now, oh, I loved Halo Wars 1. Everyone that I talked to hated Halo Wars 1. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. My brother got it for me for Christmas like four years ago, four or five years ago, something like that. It's a great, 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 great game. It's on backwards compatibility at the moment, so um, sometime soon I'm going to be getting it and bringing it in here as well as I already did with the COD Black Ops 1. But the best thing about this is they, they don't have a release date for it, but what they're doing is a, a beta, like a demo of it at the moment. It goes from the 13th to the 20th of this month, right, 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 right now. So for me it's the 14th, but for them over there it's the 13th. So from the end of the Microsoft conference is when that started, and it will end on the 20th. So for me it will end on the 21st, because it goes from the 14th to the 21st for me, but America will be 13th to the 20th. That's going right now. I already had it downloaded while I went to the um, shop, so I can put the, um, the pre-orders down. Uh, it looks really, really fucking cool, and I'm going to be live streaming that tonight. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to be. It's just going to be like using my webcam through the computer with the Elgato stuff like that. It's not going to be with the, um, the camcorders. It's not going to be like HD graphics because this is HD, but it's progressive HD, which means it's um, integrated lines across the screen, where instead of it's um, it's not interlaced, so it's a bit more, it's a bit harder to get better a better 1080p compared to what an interlaced is. So that's why sometimes my camcorder doesn't look like it's the best graphics. But Halo Wars 2 was easily the best one out of the Microsoft conference by far. And if I had to put um, my favourite game from every single conference, Microsoft easily, Halo Wars, uh, Ubisoft easily for honour, EA easily Titanfall, Bethesda easily Dishonoured 2, and Sony, that one's kind of a difficult one because... Although I, I don't have as much of an emotional attachment to them because I know I'm not going to be able to play them. But probably the best one would probably be... Probably have to go... What is it? Fuck it. I'll probably go Gears of War... Uh, not Gears of War. God of War. Probably end up going uh, God of War though because it has a really cool concept to it. So, but if I had to put them in my top favourite from top favourite game to least favourite game, God of War would be at the bottom. Then it would be Titanfall 2. Then it would be... See, this is the difficult part because I love For Honor, I love Halo Wars, and I love Dishonored. So probably put I'll put Halo Wars two as third. I'll put Dishonored two as first, and then For Honor as second. Because I haven't played For Honor yet, but I know that Dishonored one was amazing. I have something to go off for Dishonored, but I don't have anything to go off for For Honor. So that is my favourite sets. That is my review of everything that's happened in the E three conferences over the last two days. Uh, if you want to go into more details, go right ahead, look them up, all that kind of shiznit. It is a good thing to do, a good thing to research all these games before you put any kind of money down on them. That's what I kind of did before, after these conferences. That's why I'm not putting much 
information towards the games are um, besides what they actually are and anything that announced in the conferences. I already went on to a whole bunch of these games, their websites and all that kind of shit, registered for their betas, registered for everything else and all that kind of crap. For Honor is going to be doing a beta by the way as well um, sometime soon so register at forhonor.ubisoft.com to register for it so you can get involved as well so I have someone to play with but other than that I have nothing else to add this has been my second annual E3 coverage video of all five conferences EA, Bethesda, Microsoft, Ubi and Sony if you like this video leave a like down below share it with your friends give me some feedback and give me some ideas on some videos to do I've got some Halo Wars 2 to cover right now after I finish editing this all together so thank you guys for watching and like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video Got me songs like this. No! <laughs> <laughs>